The diet in a stock camp used to be basic to say the least. Bread or damper and beef washed down with a mug of tea was the staple. We killed and butchered our own beef, most of which was dry salted, and the killer would last about oh, 10 to 12 days. That would be a couple of days of fresh meat, and for the remainder, dry salted meat. There were occasions when we just didn't have time to get a killer, and the camp would get low on beef. When this happened, the cook often came to the branding yard and collected enough calf testicles to make a stew or a curry. The following poem is a true story of what happened one day when we ran low on beef. Boab and the Ball Stew We were flat out branding at a yard called Robin Soap, so to give the fellas a spell, I called a break for a smoke. We'd been going flat out for the last three weeks or so, mustering and branding the kind of work that only ringers know. And we were getting low on beef, but we hadn't had time to kill. So the cook come to the bronco yard, a billy can to fill. As I removed the testes with a knife-sharpened blade, the cook's errand was obvious, and our hunger began to fade. Now you may call them mountain oysters or prairie if you wish. The fact is if you're hungry, these little gems are just the dish. The ones the size of mandarins, the cook she cast aside, she only kept the smaller ones, for in her work she took great pride. For to the connoisseur of testicles, the fact is quite well known, that in the smaller ones, the flavour is quite full blown. You can cook them on the coals or the flames of a branding fire, where you may burn them to a frazzle at the end of a piece of wire. Or you can fry them up in breadcrumbs, do a curry or a stew. It all depends upon your taste or on your point of view. Now if you're hungry in the bush, you can even eat goanna. They reckon it's just like chook, but cooked in a different manner. In my opinion, it's tasteless although the meat is white. Tastes like chicken? <laughs> nah, mate, that definitely isn't right. But as for the bovine testy, now that's a different matter, of course. Put this delicacy in a stew and you have a gastronomic force. So when we finished Brandon, we headed to the camp oven by the fire. The contents were steaming and the smell was something to admire. And there beside the spuds and onions, the mountain oysters floated. With a belly full of these, we'd all soon be feeling bloated. And one among us called Boab filled his plate to overflowing. Salivating at the thought of food, his face was fairly glowing. We all tucked in hungrily, but poor Boab looked askance, stared long and hard at his plate, then gave a sideways glance. He sat there with a the fork, and he pushed his food around. Then with his riding boot he began kicking at the ground. Are these testicles? asked Boab, his mouth a little tight. No, that bloody ball, said Wally, just to put him right. Now Boab's throat and stomach recoiled at such a gourmet feast. No way would this man eat the reproductive organs of a beast. And the silence was prolonged as we looked at his half-full plate. Then came the quiet question, What did you think of the ball stew, mate? Now this may not be your taste in food, but you can't complain about the price. But Boab's view upon the ball stew was that the gravy was very nice.